Hi guys, back from another video and it's been a while so I thought I'd do a new one today and the thing I want to talk about today is VS Code. Uh, as you can see, I've got VS Code open here but specifically one of the things that I wanted to talk about was a plugin for VS Code. Um, now I've been jumping around between editors probably for the last five or six years. Um, for my PHP work I use PHP Storm. Uh, for my JavaScript stuff, I tend to use uh, VS Code these days. I sometimes use Sublime. Um, and then every once in a while, I'll have a stint where I want to use Vim. And I've done another video on Vim, which I'll link above. But uh, Vim is a great editor, and it's probably my favorite editor. But it's got some shortcomings. So... The biggest problem for me with Vim is it doesn't have the functionality of, say, an IDE or even sort of an intelligent editor. Um, PHP Storm I would class as an IDE. Uh, VS Code I would say is a really intelligent editor. Um, I wouldn't say it's an IDE because it doesn't sort of have any inherent knowledge as such out of the box of uh, things like PHP. Um, you can get it pretty close. And today I was just going to show you some examples of some of the things that you can do with VS Code uh, and the Vim plugin. So if we just open a file here, so let's go Command P. Uh, if we go to this welcome file. Now the thing you'll probably notice straight away is that my cursor uh, is, is this block. So this basically signifies that I'm in normal mode. If you know Vim, you'll know what this means. Um, if you don't know Vim... Vim's got three modes. It's um, essentially insert mode where you can insert text. You've got normal mode where you can give the editor commands. Uh, and then you've got visual mode where you can select stuff. Um, I won't go too much into the Vim specifics today, but I'll just show you a few things that the actual uh, Vim plugin can do. So if we just pop into my settings just for a second and we go into the JSON stuff, I think it's this one. Is it this one? No, it's this one. Um, and if we go down to here, these are my actual Vim settings. Now, you don't need to worry about all of these, um, but if we just have a look, you can see I've got something called Easy Motion. Uh, I've got something called Vim Surround. And these are really popular plugins that you can get for normal, traditional Vim. Um, I've also added some bindings. Um, these are quite common bindings with people that use Vim. So, as an example, rather than having to reach for the Escape key, which is all the way up the top left, um, you can just hit JJ, which will get you into uh, normal mode if you've just been editing. Um, line numbers as well are relative. Um, so as an example, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but we can see as I move up and down, the line numbers on the left kind of move up and down with it. And the use for that is, is I move up with K and down with J. And if I wanted to go to that line that says vim.insert mode key bindings, I can just do 5k and I'm straight up to that line. I don't have to do like jjjjj or kkkkk, um, any of that kind of thing. So having relative line numbers on is great. Um, I do toggle relative line numbers because if I'm pairing with somebody, it gets quite tricky because they'll say to me, um, oh yeah, just take a look at line four and then I'll move and they'll go five, six, seven. So it's kind of <laughs> impossible. Um, to do that with relative line numbering um, and then there's other uh, bits and pieces that I've got installed just like colorings and stuff um, and then just some default things uh, that I've got down there um, so if we just go back to my last file uh, not this one sorry if we just go back to the blade file what can we do what are some of the things well first of all we can go to the bottom of a document by just uh, pressing capital G uh, we can go to the top of the document by just pressing G uh, we can move sort of step by step through the document by pressing J, K, um, and then we can do L to go that way, and then H to go uh, left. And obviously the reason for this is because it's better to have all your fingers on the home row rather than having to move your fingers all over the place and use the mouse. Um, for me personally, I don't mind using the mouse. Um, I just prefer to get everything on a keyboard shortcut if I can. So... A good example of that is like if we wanted to change the title here. So we've just got like this is a title. Now traditionally you would kind of just say delete this or you would kind of highlight it and then delete it. What we can do with uh, Vim is we can do 
uh, C, which is change, and then we can do inside, which is I, and then we can press T, which is tags. And what that will do is it will delete the contents of the current tags where you're at now, and it will put you in insert mode, so you can read, you can be straight away ready to edit some stuff. So you can just put some new title here, and then you're ready to go. So that's kind of handy. Um, another good one is when you're in um, normal mode, you can do U, and it will just undo. So that's really handy. Um, Oops, can't spell title. So then, if if you could just see that for a second, what I did there was I, if you see I'm in insert mode at the end of the E, if I just hit JJ, it puts me in uh, normal mode. And you can see the actual J appear just for a second and then it removes it. There we go, so I'm now in normal mode. Um, the other thing I can do is, uh, if I wanted to delete a line, it's just DD. Again, you know, it's really simple. So I can just press U to undo that. Um, and what else can we do? Oh, easy motion. Easy motion is crazy, right? So, say if we're in this document, right? Now, in Vim, you've got what's called a leader. Um, and a leader is just a key that you press to kind of namespace uh, your commands. Because obviously, you can't just press like Command C because that's already bound to other things within the actual editor itself. So, for me, and it's different for other people, but I have comma as my leader. So, if I press comma, so what I can do is I can double tap my leader key, so that's comma twice, and then say if there's somewhere be, uh, previous to my cursor, where my cursor is that I want to go to, I can press B, and it does this crazy thing. And when you first see this, you're like, what the hell is this? This is weird. But it's actually quite cool because what this means is rather than me having to navigate with keys and kind of move the Vim way in terms of like you know going up three lines or up wherever, I can go to a very specific point in my document so like, if you see, I'll just move my mouse here. Say if I wanted to get to here, within these parentheses here, and I wanted to edit this URL. Now I've pressed comma, which is my leader key, and then I've pressed B, which means search backwards from my cursor. What I can then do is I can press G, and it'll take me right to the beginning of where that is. Um, and then you can do things like uh, change, which is C, I, which is inside, and then if I put double quotes, and then it will basically mean change inside quotes, and then I can start typing whatever I want to here. I'll do JJ to get out of that, and then U for undo. So as you can see, you can go uh, comma, comma, B, it means you can search backwards, comma, comma, E. Uh, so comma, comma, E is searching forwards, but at the end of every word. Um, you can do like the usual Vim stuff, so if you do like comma, comma, W, it's at the beginning of each word. Um, so as you can see, you can kind of jump really quickly to places like I could just press C and start messing around with this height and then sort of change this to min height. So this is really cool. You can do some amazing stuff. So one way I recommend to learn Vim is to not try and bite off too much in, in one go. I've seen so many people try and get into Vim and they kind of go cold turkey. They go from sort of PHP storm and they jump straight into Vim. And then obviously they've got they've got so uh, so much less going on there, um, and I think the way to do it is to start off small. Um, so you don't need all these plugins, you don't need all these additional things. You just need uh, to get the basics down first. And I think doing that with um, something like VS Code is really good. And the reason I think that is because VS Code allows you to have some affordances for some kind of fallback. So if you're not quite sure of how to do something, you could just do it the VS Code way. Like you could just uh, come in here and grab your mouse um, and then say if you wanted to copy this, you could just copy this like normal. Whereas in Vim, obviously you'd be stuck, um, you know, because you wouldn't necessarily be able to copy like that um, without the correct plugins and setup and stuff. Um, so I think the Vim plugin for VS Code is really handy, particularly because you can jump around the document. Like I say, you can go to the top, you can go to the bottom, um, and you can sort of change inside tags and stuff really easy. Um, you know, you can take out the whole head tag here if you wanted to. Uh, you can just get back to where you want, and it's really simple. Um, but like I say, if you wanted to learn this, just take it one step at a time. But I hope this video has been useful. Um, it was just basically showcasing what the Vim plugin does for VS Code and uh, how cool it is. 
and uh, I'll catch you in the next video. So thanks a lot. Cheers.